Okay, I was present to speak on Matsuan. Matsuan, what does it mean? Matsuan in life, in the, in the Cree language, means life. Now, that's a very, very broad term, Matsuan. And uh, if we just go back in time a bit, I, was, uh, I spent a lot of time with my grandparents growing up. My grandfather was a very, very old man when he passed away. He didn't speak English. He never went to school. Uh, he seen the last of the uh, buffalo hunts. He was about, they figure he was, he was about 8, 10 years old when he was holding horses uh, for the hunters as they were running buffalo, hunting buffalo. And uh, he told me many stories. And then when the reserves were formed and he was the first, he was one of the, he was young at that time. Uh, so dating back, he passed away in 1967. Uh, they dated, he, he didn't even know how old he was. They figured he was born in 1860s, 1870s, but he described the events that had taken place. So uh, in understanding that, he, he, he come to uh, uh, explain a lot of things to me and told me a lot of stories about Matsuin. And today, when we look at Matsuin as life, uh, we look at it, sometimes we, we get these, uh, these feelings. How can, we, how can we honor our culture and our spiritual belief in the modern day world? How can we make it work for us as individuals? How can we make it work for us as a group, as a community, as a First Nation, to make it work? We had an economy way back, my grandfather said. We had an economy. Before signing of treaty, we had an economy that flourished. We had an economy that everyone benefited from it. And when we have that, when everyone benefits from it, everyone benefits from matsuin of life. So, <clears throat> so when uh, in this modern day world, there's a lot of uh, you know, we, we need to find our place of where we fit in and how we accept it. And yet still be proud of who we are. When we first started, I asked each and, each and every one of you, your name and where you're from. We must always stand up as an individual and say who we are and where we're from. To be proud of that. That is Matsuin. And to accept each other. That is Matsuin. That is life. So a lot of times in this modern day world, we're being torn apart. Our families are being torn apart. Our communities are being torn apart. Uh, in this modern day world of how do we make a living? How do we take that step forward for Matsuin, not only for ourselves, but for our families, our communities, our First Nations? And understanding that and trying to make that fit, as my old grandfather did. He seen the last of the buffalo hunts. He knew there was change. He knew that when, when they were put on the reserves, their whole life started to change. There's one thing we have to really look at is culture is forever evolving. Language is forever evolving. And if we don't keep up with it or try to understand it, we might have problems within ourselves. I hear a lot of elders... Uh, saying, uh, you know, we shouldn't be doing this. And some elders are saying, yes, we should be doing this. So there's, sometimes there's a division in ideas and thoughts. But we have to take a step back and look at it. And examine it. Where do I fit in? Where does my family fit in? Where does my community fit in? And... Uh, I've done that. I've been involved in businesses. I had some businesses when I was younger. I started businesses, I sold them. 
for what? For a profit. But I made sure that all along the way, I took, I had taken care of many people in terms of my family. So a lot of times, where do we draw the line with profit? How do we look at it? I just erased a lot of, uh, a lot of notes on this board. It's, it's a reviewing our actions, a review, a reviewing the judgments that we made, uh, this, this not judgment, the decisions that we made to make profit. And yet still be able to feel good about ourselves of who we are as First Nation people, trying to walk in this, in this, uh, with culture. I, uh, I'm one of the very lucky ones. I did not attend a residential school, per se, as Indian residential school. I, I, Indian Affairs stuck me into uh, Notre Dame College. So I attended Notre Dame College for years. And uh, there, I remember my old teacher, Pierre Murray. Harry, when you go back to your, when you go back to your, uh, when you're done here, you're going to go back, go back to your people. Don't ever remember, don't ever forget your language and your culture. Pull that to me. Don't ever forget your language, your culture, and your spiritual belief. Go back and live the way your grandfather had taught you. And yet, at the same time, my dad and my brother's that are younger than me at Labrette were being, uh, you know, told not to practice our culture. Not, but I found that way through, through uh, the teachings of the old and the teachings of the new. When I, get, when I got out of, when I got out of uh, Notre Dame College, I worked out. I went and got some experience in work, in life, in different things, and I started my own businesses. I had a trucking firm was my last business that I sold. I had a, a welding shop that I started on the reserve on Piepot with one welder, employed four people. And at the end, I sold my, all my rights to, to uh, two of my employees. And they, were, and they continued on, but we made sure, I made sure that I always followed culture. One of the things that we did was, I did was always honored this. I always honored tobacco, because in in the economic development world, in the economic development world, people are being developed, things are being developed. Everything starts from Mother Earth. Everything, no matter what we look at, no matter where we go, no matter what venture we're in, starts with Mother Earth. All economic development ventures come from Mother Earth. And just think about it. Where is this? What is this made of? Where does plastic come from? Byproduct of oil. That's, that's the steel leg. Where does that come from? Mother Earth. Particle of grandfather rock, made up of grandfather rock. And we can go on and on and on. So how do we manage this, that we can feel good and make money at it? Well, this class is telling you, this class is teaching you how to keep a ledger, how to, how to do your books, how to budget. And today, we're going to chat about life. We're going to talk about life. How do I fit in in Matsu? And how do I fit in life? I didn't expect to be here for a couple hours, but they tell me I'm here for two hours. <laughs> so after about an hour, we'll take a break. <laughs> 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 no, no. <laughs> 
we'll take a break after a couple hours. One of the things that I, I follow and, that, and guide me and guide my decisions in this, in this uh, time is if we just use that medicine wheel concept, and it's only a concept, uh, if it's me and our grandparents and everybody uh, can, uh, we visualize, we think differently uh, when we see things. Uh, like we have four parts, our spiritual entity, our mental, our emotions, and our physical. Well, when I was growing up, my grandmother uh, talked about all these things. And she uh, came one day because my grandmother used to teach Cree at the First Nations University. She was one of the first Cree teachers here. And she came back and said, this is the concept that uh, and it works for us. So this is an individual. This is everyone's made up of this. So now there's another one, and we all know that too. And this is us in our community, our family, and there's four that we got to try and balance. We put these two, two together. Emotional, physical, and social. In the business world and in the economic development world, we need to try and balance these two wheels for ourselves. We need to feel good about ourselves, and we need to feel that we're doing this and we should be doing it for our community also social aspects of it. And sometimes, you know, we have difficult doing that. We have difficult visualizing it. And that's why I've asked for this board so that we can, we can uh, work this through. And, the mo and things evolve, as I said, culture evolves. Uh, culture evolves, languages evolve, time evolves. It's forever moving ahead. We ha forever moving ahead. At one time, when we were here, in my grandfather's time, and our, many of our grandfathers, your grandfathers, when we were here in this, in this uh, land uh, with just our own people, our culture still, still evolved at that time because we developed trade routes between different groups of people, between different bands. Uh, we developed trade routes, we, differ, we developed uh, and we shared our products. So it's no different what we're doing now than our grandparents did. Because we're all doing it for Pumatsu and we're all doing it for life. We're all doing it to sustain life with our families and our communities. So when we're talking about, about how, do we, how do we process, and we hear a lot of, uh, you know, read Facebook, all these different stories on Facebook, all these different stories in the news of uh, the industry, the oil industry, the gas industry, mining industry, forest industry, all that, all those industries. Uh, affects us. Everything starts from Mother Earth. So how do we walk with that? How do we feel good about ourselves? Because at the end of the day, to sustain life, and each and every one of you are here to better your lives, to better, to better and move on because of this. This is what drives the world. At one time, we didn't use money. We traded, we bartered. When we had extra, we would help those that less fortunate. But when we had extra, we'd also trade for things that we needed. So anyway, 
it was still a product that could be bought and sold. But today, everybody understands this. We, uh, on Pipot, the band council about a few years ago bought some land in town. And at the time, uh, one of the head push was uh, one of the one of the councillors that pushed this was uh, on band council, and, and he pushed it buy land in town. Let's buy land in town. And everybody was gung ho. Okay, we bought half a block. We bought a block of land. And then they said, Well, what are you buying this land for? There's not even any houses on it. He said, we're buying this land for economic development. But there's nothing there. Well, that's where we have to develop it. So after our membership understood that we, this land sat idle for a number of years till we, till we time was right to enter into the right business and to find a partner, to partner up with a, a firm or a group of people so that we can enter into business because we didn't have the capital. We had the land, but we didn't have the capital to start this business. So at that time, the chief and council had the insight to, to develop this. As all of you know, it's Creeland Gas Park. And then there was, again, you know, talk of, what's the gas bar going to do? What is this gas bar going to do for a pipe pot band? It's just a gas bar. But again, we had to go through and we had to revisit it. We're going to develop this gas bar to benefit the people. We're going to develop this gas bar to, for employment and the profits to be sent back to the band. And then the profits are sh the band council, uh, when they receive the profit from the band monthly, they distribute it. To the, to the needs of, of the band. So when you look at that, aren't we doing what our grandfathers did a long time ago? Aren't we doing the same thing, but in the modern day using this? And a lot, and a lot, and at times, we have to sit back and we really have to look at this. Because when you look at it, is it culture? It's culture in the strongest sense. Because we are identifying ourselves of who we are, and we are also sharing with everyone. Not only, not only, Individuals will, will have uh, employment that they can share with their families and raise their families, but the group as a whole. So that, you know, and along the way there's many stumbling blocks. There's many th things that come your way that try to trip you up. But th wherever there's a way you can always overcome it. If there's a, a, something that blocks you, you can always figure it out and overcome it. And how do we do that? We sit together, we talk about it, but most of all, we incorporate our prayer in it. We incorporate our prayer, we incorporate our beliefs in it. That we're, we're not going to the extreme. We're making a life for people. We're giving people a chance to make a life, uh, life for themselves, to feel good about themselves, and for the band to benefit. And to give you an example how we share that, some of the profits that are shared, uh, that's sent back to the band. The chief and council and look at, they, they, they uh, have different budgets. Hot lunch program at the school for all the kids. Because 
a lot of our elders haven't worked per se as to earn a pension. A lot of them are seasonal workers, never got to work. All the elders' power bills are paid, not power bills, all the elders get 65 and over get 300 bucks a month for four months, five months of the year to help offset the electrical costs, electric heat. Things like this are shared. People like this benefit. That's how we can feel good about it, if we're sharing. When I was in business, I shared it with my family. I shared it with my family. I employed four people. And the, and, and the money that I made, we all made a living with it. When we're ranching, we're raising cattle, we're raising horses, we're selling horses, we're selling cattle for this, so that we can eat. So where do we draw this line sometimes? All this talk on TV, all what's happening down to our, our, our relatives in the States, where do we draw the line? We have to feel good when we make our own decision. We have a lot of, a lot of our, some of our band members have contracts at K plus S, along with other, a few of your bands. That's possible because things were put in place. When that mine was first started, it was started with a culture, with a feast. Nobody knows that. A relative, Ray LaValle, took a group of elders to go and have a feast on that ground for no actions to happen, for people to make a living, for people to seek matzo in for life. So when we are in this, we also have to always put back. We have to put things back. We cannot continuously take. We need to put things back. That's where we run into problems if we don't put things back. And our culture dictates that to us. When you take things, you put things back. Mother Earth gives us a living from the petroleum and from the gas we sell, the oil we sell, the bread we sell, the food we sell, all comes from Mother Earth. And then the profits from there are being shared. Is there any question? Any questions? I, I look, looking for a to keep this moving on. Well, then. Yes, Sean. We, we're having trouble seeing the whiteboard. Is there any way uh, yep. the connection can zoom in? I can zoom in just a second. Um, I do have a question. When you talk about, because we've been talking about finding ventures that don't impact, but as you point out, we need oil if we're going to have plastic. We. Mm -hmm. For potash, potash is a non-renewable resource. It takes, right. How do we give back then? How does the giving back process work? I guess the, the giving back process is, what we're doing is we're taking, we're taking all these products that uh, you know, we, we believe is from mother, mother Earth, right? So what we're doing, what we do is we give back to make sure that nothing is abused that we don't mine things to cause people harm, that we don't take more than we need. To give back a portion of, of our profits to the less fortunate, to share what Mother Earth gave us, uh, uh, to share with the less fortunate. That's what I mean by giving back. Mm 